this and you have to give me the grace to stand in place of the children for you today. Normally uh, one of the youth should be taking the sound on this particular day but uh, God knows best and he understands best. So let us pray. Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, the God of the children, the God that gives us children, the God that gives us joy in our children. Once again, we have come before you to celebrate this day that you set aside to thank you for our children. Okay. Father, let this day be a day of blessing for them. Okay. Open your door of blessing and rain upon our children today. Okay. As we share your wonderful words of life, let this seeds of life fall into the source of our hearts okay. and of our own hearts. Let it produce wonderful harvest in our lives. Father, we commit our children in your hands. We thank you for saving them and preserving them. We ask you that you cheat them your ways. That you give them the right spirit and the right heart to honor and worship you all the days of their lives. That they come to know you and the power of your resurrection. We ask that you use them in your kingdom for your glory. That they may even be vessels of honor in your hands. In Jesus' mighty and mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Our first lesson today is taken from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 23, verses 22 to 26. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verses 22 to 26. Once again, Proverbs 23, 22 to 26. And it starts by saying, Hacking unto thy father that begat thee. Hacking, it means diligently listen and learn. Don't take was from your father, you know, lightly. Hacking means to really concentrate, to focus on what he's telling you. Listen to you, don't dismiss it. Why did God say this? Because he, know the, he knows that the youth, the youth think they know more than anybody else. They think they can conquer the world, they think they can do anything, they're fearless, they have no fear of anything. And many of them discountenance the sayings and the advice of their parents, especially their fathers. They think, oh, this one is old and outdated. 
is not current with things. He cannot tell me what he's telling me is just rubbish. See? That's why God says hacking. You know, normally you expect the, the children to listen to their father, but nowadays Satan has entered the hearts of many of the children and turned their hearts against their father. This is why in the book of Malachi it says that I'm going to send my servants that will return the hearts of the fathers to the children. Because God knows that their hearts have been turned against their fathers. That's why it says hack him. He was diligently focused. Listen, give attention to the words of your father. In Malachi, see God had to send his servants as this uh, uh, John the Baptist to prepare the hearts of his children. Okay? Okay? And he says in uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse, verse 5, he said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, that Elijah, Jesus said, John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah in him. So it was actually John the Baptist was talking about because at this time Elijah died. And this had turned the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with the cross. You see? So God knew that and he sent John the Baptist to begin that act so that once again the, the children could begin to listen to their fathers and vice versa. God, you know, Satan had done a great job of turning the hearts of the fathers away from the children and the heart of the children to the, against the fathers. So God had to restore that first. This is why he said, hack him. It means take seriously the words of your father. Don't discountenance what your father tells you. Not only are they older than you, they have seen life experiences that you have never seen. They may not be current, but what they tell you would help you, whatever stage of life you are in, because they've been there before you. See? It says, hacking, it says, take seriously in, in Proverbs 1 8. What does it say? Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8. And that says, my son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. See? Don't think because your father is uneducated, he hasn't achieved what he has achieved, that he doesn't know what he's talking about. No. That would be foolishness and foolhardiness to ignore the sins of your father. Because not only does he care for you, you are his child. He can share with you what he cannot share with anybody because he loves you. So God says, I can unto your father. Don't despise. Despise not thy mother when she's old. Don't say her oh, mom's outdated. She doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, that's uh, the past, not now. No. What she says, what your mother and your father tells you is relevant for every stage of your life. For the past, present, and future. They have still said life, you have not said it. Like they have not been where they've been, you see, just like the Bible is, is valid for every year the past, the present, the future. Some people say, Oh, the Bible is used for the times of Jesus. No, 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 it's uh, just as relevant today, 2021, as it was then because the principles there are lifelong, they're not for a particular time, but for every stage of life. You see, many, many children have lost their directions. And when they ignored the advice of their parents. They've done what they felt was right to do at the time, and later on they regretted it. Many have died. Many have suffered greatly. This is why God says, Hacking unto your father, that he got did that give birth to you, and despise not your mother when she's old. See? Despise not, don't ignore, don't discountenance it. Don't say mom is old, doesn't know what she's talking about. No, they do know what they're talking about. It will be to your detriment and the loss for you to ignore the advice of the parents. Because what they're telling you is what they've experienced. And it will help you at every stage of your life. You ignore the advice at your own help. Say, so buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. By the truth, what does that mean? What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. To buy it, it is not with money, 
No, 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 no. This buy is talking of your diligence. Your diligence, your time you're going to spend to seek out this wisdom, this truth, the sacrifice. Because rather than seek the truth, you may be enjoying yourself, going out to parties, and enjoying yourself with your friends and all that. No, but it says buy means that this thing will cost you, but what will cost you is not money. Is your time, is your diligence, is your attention, your concentration. That is what you need to buy it. Because this thing is more valuable than money. This wisdom. So buy it with, and sell it not. Means don't give it away. Don't lose it. This thing you're going to buy. Now this truth is the word of God. And this truth can find in the Bible. Some parents don't go to church. Yes, you know that. Some parents go to church and teach their children. Bible, but not all parents do that. But says, regardless, your duty as a child is to seek the truth of God. Don't say, my mom didn't take me the Bible. Oh, my dad didn't take me the Bible. No, no, no. You are supposed to seek it out and get it. And when you get it, don't give it away. Don't sell it. Let's go to Matthew thirteen forty four. Matthew thirteen forty four. These are important words. But some people constantly blame their parents. Oh, when I was young, they didn't take me to Sunday school and give all these excuses. No, 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 no. Your parents have done their best. The rest is up to you. Seek out that wisdom of God. So Jesus Christ is the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He's talking about Jesus Christ here. He's talking about the Bible here. Matthew 13, 13, 44. He said, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. All this. This wisdom, this instruction, this understanding. You're going to get it from the Bible. Mm -hmm. One, Matthew 13, 44. Again, mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven yes. is like on the treasure of in the earth. Uh -huh. The wheat, when a man has found, yes. he hides it. Uh -huh. And for the joy thereof, go it and sell it all that he has. Yes. And buy it that fruit. That's it. He went and sell, sold everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> that wisdom that he had because it was so precious it was so precious so this is what he's saying that you must buy that thing you must take time to find that thing that thing that wisdom of god that instruction from god it is your duty don't say oh nobody taught me no 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 god says you go and get it it's not up to anybody it's up to you to find that wisdom you know don't blame anybody else but yourself. Don't think anybody's going to teach. Everybody is fighting for their own destiny. The Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's up to you to find your salvation. Don't depend on anybody else. That pastor, that brother, you depend on. He is also working for his own salvation. What are you doing? You are waiting for him when you can pick up the Bible and start. Even if you don't go to a Christian school, if you go to a Christian school, it's your duty to go and find this truth. See, don't blame anybody else. Says, Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. So it's, take, it's, talking, it's talking of you getting to seek Jesus Christ, getting to know Him, and getting to surrender your life to Him. It is up to you. It's not up to your parents, it's not up to your brothers and sisters or, or your teachers. Nowadays, in any case, nobody teaches the Bible in schools anymore, except the private schools. Because they say the school is a secular place, they don't want to offend other religions, so they don't call the name Jesus anymore in school, they don't allow Bible knowledge. So it's up to you nowadays, even like in the fall too, you are the one that has to seek it out. You have to forget your salvation. You have to work it out with fear and trembling. Knowing the, the penalty of not knowing the truth is destruction and hell fire. You see? Don't say, oh, when I'm old, I start going to church. No, no, no. Let me make my first million. No, no, no. You might never get to live with that money. You don't know where you're going, you're going to live this time. So why postpone it? You may think you do something tomorrow and tonight you'll be dead. You have not heard of people speaking about waking up. So many testimonies we have recently especially. People sleeping and never waking up. So what's the guarantee? They're going to be alive 10 years from now. You have no means of guaranteeing that. Only God knows how long they're going to live on this earth. For that reason, you must do your best to seek out Jesus in your life. Learn of Him. 
his wisdom, his instruction, and his understanding. You must seek it out. And when you get it, hold it tight. Don't let God take it from you. Don't let the devil deceive you into discarding it. When it strikes you like it struck Job, and you have been tested, don't give up on God. Because that is your last hope. Once you give up on God, you give in to Satan and you don't be living in hell. Forever. Which is better to suffer a little while on this earth, like the poor man, the book of Luke, or to enjoy your life like the rich man. And we know what happens to the rich man. The Bible says he was taken down to hell. Abraham was taken to the bosom of earth. And Lazarus was taken to the bosom of Abraham in heaven. So the decision is yours. Don't blame anybody else for your lack of salvation, lack of knowledge of God. It is up to you. Because the Bible specifically says, expressly says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That applies to everybody else. Not only the youth, even the adults. Like was Paul, who God used mightily, said, I put my body under subjection, lest after saving many, I myself be disqualified. He said it. He was afraid of losing his place in heaven. Mm-hmm. Are you imagining that was Paul? Yes. He said, because of this, I put my balance on you. I don't keep on fooling around. Because all these people are preaching, they're going to heaven. If I keep on fooling around, I'll be in hell. Then all the people have said, the God has said through me, they're looking at me from heaven. How would that be? Say, eh? Apostle Paul didn't make it? How come? It was through his ministry, I got to know Jesus. And I'm here in heaven, and he's in hell. So because of that, I put my body into salvation. Apostle Paul walked out of salvation with fear and trembling. You too, as a youth, must do the same. And you know, it's good to know God when you're young. Yeah. Many people don't realize this. Yeah. If you have to delay it, by the time you delay it, you've committed so many sins. Yeah. You've suffered so much, yeah. needless suffering. Yeah. Because if you had known God in your youth, you would have avoided many, many, many disasters in your life. Because God would have directed you, you have been led by the Holy Spirit, you would not have committed so many sins. Yeah. But when you say, oh, I'm delayed, after all, the church is full of old people. And I know my friends go to church, so why should I go to church? Well, on the day of judgment, everybody will stand on their own. There's nothing like, oh, these people, they are too, they are too young to know God. No, no, the judgment is safe for everyone. Huh? It's safe for everyone. Exercise 7. 7. 12. 12, yes. Remember now. Creator. Remember your creator? In the days of your youth. In the days of your youth? Why the evil days come not? Why the evil days come not? No, the years go not. Mm-hmm. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure. And then, you see? When you say you're going to leave it to your old, suppose yeah. by the time you get old, you develop a disease. Yeah. And you can't worship God anymore. Maybe you have a stroke or something. Yeah. Who knows? Why postpone tomorrow what you can do today? Why? Because of your enjoyment, because you want to enjoy. You want to go to parties and fool around with girls and boys. You don't want to miss that. The enjoyment with the Holy Spirit is far better than the enjoyment of the world. Maybe you don't realize that. You think all the fun is in parties and discos and drugs and drink and alcohol. No, no, no. That earthly pleasure will kill you. But if you go for the spiritual pleasure of the Holy Spirit, it will give you life. You won't know, be addicted to drugs, you won't get diseases, mm-hmm. you won't get all these health problems. You know? The Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You see? Mm-hmm. Exodus 11. Yes. Exodus 11. Right. Rejoice, O young man. Rejoice, O young man. In your youth. In your youth. And let your heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Uh-huh. Let your heart cheer thee in the days of youth. Uh-huh. And walk in the ways of thy heart. Yes. And in the sight of thy eyes. Yes. But know thou that for all these things, yes. God will bring thee into judgment. That's it. Therefore, mm-hmm. remove sorrow mm-hmm. from your heart mm-hmm. and put away evil yes. from your flesh. Yes. For childhood and youth are vanity. That is it. She said childhood and youth are vanity. And that is what second is to steal many, many lives of the youth. And many are going to hell right now because it, it tempts them. Oh, I need to enjoy like a friend. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's raving. Everybody's parties and drinking alcohol and using drugs. Why don't you join them? 
you know, you're going to be like an old man out. And so because of the pressure of their friends, they go and join them. And what happens? They will kill them and take that straight to help them. Don't let that be your own passion. You choose the right way from your youth, from a young age. You need to serve God now. By the time you are old, old, you have achieved so many crowns from God. You have brought so many souls to the kingdom of God. You know? So it says, The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begets the wise child shall have joy of him. Why? Because he's been led by the Spirit of God. He's walking well, he's an obedient child. He studies the Bible, he lives a holy life, doesn't break the laws, he doesn't drink alcohol, doesn't use drugs, doesn't smoke, he doesn't want to talk with men. He does well in his school work, he does well at work. Of course, he's going to bring joy to his father. You see? But a child that doesn't have that wisdom of God, is not that the Holy Spirit will happen, will join bad gangs, prostitution, drugs, alcoholism, pornography, uh, gain, all these terrible things, and end up with life disease and people and all these things. So it's up to you to make sure you're a source of joy for your father by studying the word of God and surrendering your life to him now. To you, the message straight to you and say, oh, this man is being outdated. But you realize that I'm not being outdated because I've seen life more than you. And I know that that is what will benefit you down the road. Not this wayward life you are trying to live with your friends. You know? No. It's to, you know, to, to please your father. You need to know your, your word of, the word of God and to study the Bible. So he that begins a wise child shall have joy. Yeah. The father shall have joy. When the son or daughter is doing well in life, in school, mm -hmm. in, in company, they are, they are law abiding, mm -hmm. they don't bring shame to their parents, of course they are happy. For many children, what happens? They bring disgrace to their families. They are involved in drugs, alcohol, alcoholism, prostitution. They, they are arrested on drug charges, on, uh, on violations and laws of the land. Let go and build them out. That brings disgrace to the family. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to be your portion. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the child that your parents be regretting the heart. Do you know that do you know that God told the parents in the Old Testament? It's the book of Exodus. So he said, if your child is rebellious and doesn't obey you, it says take him to the elders of the church, uh, elders of the town, and tell them this child is a rebellious child, doesn't obey us, he drinks and alcohol and all these things. Say, and what God said? God said, let them stone that child to death. God said that. He wasn't a human being. And he told the parents to do that. He said, if your, parent, if your child is wayward and really rebellious, take him to the elders of the town. Tell them what he's doing. And they will stone that child to death before your eyes. That is God's issues are strictly. God looks at these things. But nowadays, everybody, everything is diluted. There's no more right or wrong. There's no discipline in the schools. Now the children are beating, the, uh, the students are beating the like, tutors in school. The students can't discipline the children because of fear of the parents. You see, that is not God's way. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. He, he will not depart from it. You see, when you have to have peace, train up a child in the right way. Then you have peace. If you don't train up a child in the right way, that child will give you problems and kill you as a parent. You know the story of uh, the boy who was about to be executed? For armed robbery, he said he had the last wish. And he said, What? Well, said, Let me pray to my mother. No? My mother, the boy, the mom. I know what he did. He beat up the mom's ear. I said, This is punishment for you because if you have trained me properly, I will not be sitting here to die. He said, God blame the parents. I said, The parents have a duty to train the children. You have to watch. He said, the father, My father and their mother shall be glad. And I see that bear they shall rejoice. You see? Because of the wisdom, because of the obedience of the law, because of the study of the Bible, because God is leading you, it's a hard job of you. Don't think those things are just for nothing. No. When you come to God, He will lead you, you will be prosperous, be successful in life. Hmm? Compared to your friends who are not, it will be a big difference. If you're going like this, they'll be going like this. Because the Spirit of the Lord is in you. Because you've sought, you've bought that wisdom. You bought that instruction and understanding, and God is giving it to you and is guiding you. You know that the Bible is the success book for this world. If you want to be successful in this world, you have to know the Bible. It's the guidebook. 
if you don't have the Bible, then you make a lot of mistakes and you suffer a lot. But if from a, your child you know the Bible, then it will be guiding you. You will not fall into many pits. You will not be deceived by Satan. Because now this Satan is deceiving the youth big time. And many are going astray. Many are dying terrible deaths. So that won't be the portion of children. You see? So my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. This message is really God speaking to you. Say, my son, give me your heart. God the Father is speaking to you as a son or his daughter. When he says, give me your heart, he says, give me your whole being. He says, surrender your life to me. That's what God is telling you. And let your eyes observe my ways. Your eyes can only observe God's ways and follow him when you have surrendered your life to him. If you try to do it without surrendering your life to him, you will feel woefully. Why? Because only the Spirit of God in you that will make you obey God's commandment. You in your flesh cannot, repeat, cannot obey God's commandment. The Bible says that the things of the flesh are opposite to the Spirit. The kind of man, he wants to obey God, he cannot. Because they are spiritually designed. When your spirit says, get up and pray, your spirit says, oh, I'm too tired. The spirit says, you have to fast today. If he says, no, uh, I die of hunger, I have a terrible headache. See? There's a conflict. So you don't know what to do. In every human being, there's a flesh and a spirit. And they're constantly opposing each other. It depends on who you surrender yourself to. You surrender more yourself to the spirit, then your spirit man will rise and be controlling life. But if you surrender more to your flesh, then your flesh will rise and be controlling you. And the way Jesus has seen his death as you know that. So he says, My son, give me your heart. God is asking you today to surrender your life to him. And then learn to observe his will. Because once you give him your heart, he will give you his spirit. And his spirit will empower you to observe and to obey his commandments. But without that spirit in you, you cannot. You will try, but you will fail woefully. This is the point of the church today. Many people are not filled with the spirit of God. And so they always fail into falling into temptations, adultery, fornication, uh, pornography, fraud, all these things, because they don't have the spirit of God in them, directing them and guiding them. Don't think you can follow God without the spirit. No, no, they, that's not the way great God created it. It doesn't work that way. The Bible was written for people who have the spirit and who will be able to obey Him. Without the spirit, you cannot obey God. And you fail woefully in your Christian life. You see? So you need to surrender your life to God. God's asking for your heart. Your heart is where every decision. The Bible says the heart is the wellspring of life. It says, guard your heart. But the heart is the wellspring of life. Your life comes from your heart. If somebody can catch your heart, it captures everything about you. That's why the Bible says, the Catholic says, train up a child. By the time, if you, if you train a child, and the Catholic, by the time they are seven, they are Catholic for life. That's what they say. Because they've so indoctrinated them by that stage that they will not change anymore. The same thing with you. If you see God early in your life, surrender your heart to Him, He will totally capture your life and use you for His glory. Nobody needs to change your mind, no matter what happens. See? So the choice is in your hands. And this message is for all our children. God is asking you today to give you, to give him your hearts, both girls and boys. So now your life to him. And he will take hold of him and use you mightily for his glory. Go to the next passage, book of Matthew, that is uh, uh, Matthew 13, that is 36 to 43. Matthew 13, 36 to 43. Now this is the parable of the wheat and the tears. And to go to that passage, let's first read the uh, parable and it says that another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man he sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears or weeds weeds among the wheat and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then there appeared the tears of the wheat also the weeds also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir did you not so good seed in your field. From where then had these tears or these weeds? They were surprised. Ah, we sowed good seed, but look at these weeds growing. 
This is not what we sold. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Without them that we go and gather them up. But he said, No, lest while you gather them up, that is the tears, we also wrote out the wheat with them. Oh, how, how interesting. So let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will say to the rivers, Gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them, or gather the wheat into my back, into my kingdom. See? So this is the background to our passage. So, and then the disciples came to him, verse 36, that's where we started. And they said, Declare unto us the parable of the tears of the field. The disciples don't understand, and they have to ask Jesus the interpretation of that parable. You know, Jesus spoke to the people in parables as we all know, because they couldn't understand if he spoke to them spiritual things. So he has to use examples. Even with the examples, they couldn't understand. I see the apostles coming to him to ask for explanation. And he said, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sowing seeds in the world, even as we speak. He is the sower of good seed, of good children. Right now, he's bringing up good children. Are you going to be one of them? So the field that is sown is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom of God. But the tears of the weeds, they are the children of the wicked one. See? And the children of the wicked one. Let's go to John 8 44. First John 3 8. First John 3 8. John 8 44. You need to realize that amongst you, in your school, in your community club, in your family, there are children of the evil one amongst you. Don't accept everybody on face value as they're all good. No, no, no. Satan has brought up his own children to torment the children of God. In the churches, in your clubs, in your schools, there are children of evil one there. And they're sent to torment you, to, to drive you from God, to pull you out from the position. Don't let them do that. Okay. okay first lesson. Yes. John 8.44 First John 8, 8 says He that committed sin of the devil For the devil sinned from the beginning For this purpose the Son of God was manifested That he might destroy the wars of the devil See? For this reason the Son of God Jesus Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil In your community, in your school the devil is working and he has many agents there Just because you are 5 or 6 years of age Does not mean that your classroom is an agent of Satan. Yes, there are many agents of Satan in the classroom today, in the elementary school, in the nursery school, you'll be amazed. In the high school, there are many children of Satan there. Don't accept everybody as, oh, he's my friend. Your friend might be your worst enemy. This is a warning to you, you youth in the schools. Okay, then it's for the four. You are of your father. Yes. The devil. Mm -hmm. And the loss of your father, you will be. See? He was a murderer from the beginning mm -hmm. and about not in truth. Yes. Because there's no truth in him. Mm -hmm. When he speaketh a lie, exactly. he speaketh of his own. Mm -hmm. For he is a liar yes. and the fire of all. Yes. You see? So Jesus is telling you today, as a youth, that you should be careful. That just like you are the children of God, a child of God. There are children of Satan in your community, in your church, group, in your house club, wherever you are. Satan has his own children there. So you have to be careful. Don't accept everybody. Don't take take everything they give you as innocence. You know that children in schools are not being sent to recruit other children into the kingdom of darkness. How? By bringing sweets and candy to the schools and giving it to their friends. There are many testimonies of children that have been indoctrinated, that have been recruited, initiated into the kingdom of into the marine kingdom. How? By their friends giving them candy, gum, sweets, biscuits, their schools. See, they just say, Oh, he's my friend, she's my friend, and she gave me these biscuits. The next thing they have become witches and losers and marine agents, destroying children of God. So God is warning you to be very careful. 
There are children of the wicked one, even in your family, even in your own family, your brother, your sister may be a child of the evil one. Don't just say, oh, I trust my brother. No. Your brother might be agent, the sister is using to kill you. And you are laughing and accepting whatever is giving you. No. You have to have discernment. She just said, by their fruits, you shall know them. So the enemy that sold them is the devil. These are the children of the devil. And the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. You know, when the, the servants came to that uh, household and, and asked him, should we go and remove this weeds? They're not supposed to be, to be here. He says, no, leave them. Lest when you are putting the weeds, you also put the weeds as well. In other words, the judgment has been delayed to the time of the harvest, the end. See, and many children are deceived, many people are deceived and think that because they are doing wicked things, killing their classmates, you know, initiating their classmates, destroying their parents, they forget that judgment is coming. You can see that Jesus says, no, don't judge them now. Wait till the end to the harvest, and then they will be judged. So the harvest is the end of the world, and the rapers are the angels. The repository is going to dwell for you 13, Revelation 14, 15. Revelation 14, 15. Revelation 14, 15. And it says, And another year came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Cross in thy sickle and rip, for the time is come for thee to rip, for the harvest of the heart is ripe. See? The harvest of the harvest is the end times. Don't fool yourself thinking that because God is not judging you now, they are going to go scot free. There are many, many children who are, have been initiated in the marine kingdom, who are witches and wizards, killing their parents, destroying other people's families, destroying careers of their brothers and sisters, making their families poor. But their minds are covered, and they think they can get away with it. Know ye that the judgment is coming, you don't repent. You need to be delivered. You need to ask God to deliver you. Okay? So read the next passage. John 3, 13. Yes. For the others is one. Uh-huh. Come, get you down. For the price is full. That's it. The vast overflow. For the wickedness is great. Is great. And as therefore the tears, that is the weeds, the children of the devil, as they are gathered and burned in the fire, that means hell fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and then which do iniquity. Some of your classmates are witches and wizards, some of you are married agents. They go and fly in the night, go for meetings, they do what their problem tells them. You better repent. You better ask God to save your soul before it's too late. Because you can see that there's going to come judgment. God knows how many people you have killed or destroyed their lives. When I say this, you might be shocked to learn that children are doing this. People as young as 14, 12, 10 are involved in witchcraft, destroying their own parents, their own brothers and sisters, killing their teachers in school. All these things are happening. So don't think because someone is young they cannot be wicked they can be agents of Caesar yes he said at the end he didn't send his angels to weed them out and throw them into the fire mm -hmm. so unless you repent today that is going to be your destiny let that not be your portion mm -hmm. you still have life in you you can still repent mm -hmm. once you die there is no more repentance there is only judgments that's what the Bible says after death, Hebrews 9 29, is it? There comes judgment. You cannot longer repent once you die. You can only repent as long as you have this breath in you. Once this breath is lost, that is it. Hebrews 9 29, uh, so, uh, 27. It says, And a disappointment to men wants to die. You cannot die twice. Once you die, it says, but after this, the judgment. 
So if you ever die without you repenting of your sins, some of you listening to me, you know you are in cults. You know you are in witches' covenants. You know you are in the marine kingdom. You know you are, you are being used to wreak havoc on your children, on your family, on your brothers and sisters. You know it as you are listening to me. You know that there is coming judgment. If you ever die in that sin, that is it. It's for eternity, you will be born in hellfire. So this is time for you to repent. Once you have bread, if you don't know how to do, go to your pastor or pray for God to deliver you. Don't leave it too late. So, so I shall cast them into a furnace of fire. That is hell fire. So where the worms do not stop. The fire does not stop in hell. It's forever and never. When you've had 10,000 years, you just start counting. An endless eternity of pain. I shall cast them to a point of pride where there should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Revelations 19 20, 2010. Revelations 19 20. And 2 Peter 2 1 2. 2 Peter 2 1 2. You need to know the truth. So you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Many who land up in hell. Because they didn't know the truth. It was too late. They died in their ignorance. Now they're suffering eternity. Seven, yes. And the beast was taken. Mm -hmm. And with him the false prophets. Mm -hmm. That brought miracles. Yes. Yes. With which he deceived them. Yes. That he had deceived the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And them that worshipped his image. Yes. This boat was cast alive. Yes. Into a lake of fire. Yes. Running with brimstone. Yes. And Second Peter 2, 1, 2 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as they said, the false teachers among the people, who privileged are bringing damnable heresies. Heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring them for themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So don't follow error. Don't follow the truth. There's coming judgment. Maybe nobody knows in your family that you are a witch or a wizard. Maybe nobody knows you're an agent of Satan. Maybe you've been initiated by your classmates. Maybe you're in grade five or grade six. And you've already maybe killed your parents. Maybe you killed your mom or dad. You put sickness on one of them. They are poor now. You need to repent. You see? So then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Who are ears to hear, let him hear. That's what I've been telling you. Open your ears, lend me your ears. Hacking onto your father and your spiritual father right now. I'm telling you, you need to repent. There's coming judgments. You cannot continue to live a godless life full of immorality, iniquity, rebellion against God, smoking, uh, adultery, fornication, pornography, defrauding people, 419, Yahoo, Yahoo. And think you will inherit the kingdom of God. No, it will not happen. You need to listen now and repent now. If you die in that your sin, then there's no more repentance. And who knows when you're going to die? I mean, every day you take a model vehicles, God knows, you know, they die not be your portion. You know, who knows? Only God knows. This is the time for your salvation. This is the time for you to repent now. Don't wait any longer. Because you don't know the next minute what may happen to you. So if you listen to me now, you feel convicted by this message. You feel that this message applies to you. And that you need to repent. Then say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your precious blood today. Make me full and pure. Deliver me from this iniquity. Save my soul today. Come into my heart and rule and reign in my life. Take my name from the book of the dead and I write my name in the book of life. And so worship is the end of my days. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. If you said that prayer honestly and honestly and you really meant it, you are born again and you will wait to be given to heaven. Jesus Christ will come into your heart with his Holy Spirit. And begin to teach you how to follow and obey him and to inherit this kingdom of the to do this. Because with your mouth you have confessed his lordship, and with your heart you believed in the word's righteousness, 
for raising up on the last day, the last day of the Let us pray, Jehovah. Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, we thank you for the spirit part time. We spend in sharing your wonderful words, dwells of life into your children today. And that let this words convict them of sin, of righteousness, of judgment, and let them come to know you and the fellowship of your sufferings and the power of the resurrection. In their youth, that they will come to know you and surrender their life to you. That from this moment, it shall be vessels of honor in your hands to be used for your glory, to destroy the works of the devil, and to extend your kingdom on this earth. Father, grant this prayer in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Six. We should read the Bible and we should be the other brothers and sisters in, in the church, in your group, and make sure you attend church regularly. The Lord bless you and in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. 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 Jesus, Emiyo, Sia, 